Well, hello again. I thought it was about time that I just finished off the next section of the electronics in this uh, control box for Woodgate Crescent Station. In the last episode of this series, I talked about uh, the various modules in this control box, uh, the various block sections, the power, the interlocker, or all sorts of bits. Uh, and I made reference to the fact that I'd like to uh, put in some more of the replacement, sort of better front panels for the uh, con connection bays. Uh, I made up one more, I think I showed you that last time. I've got a few more of the uh, basically cut angle iron pieces or angle aluminium pieces. Uh, whether I get all of that done this afternoon, I don't know, but I'd certainly like to uh, crack on with uh, getting this next module connected up. I just start off by pulling out uh, some of the cable ends which need coupling up properly. That's most of them there, I think. And also in this episode, I'll explain a little bit about how the line blocked ahead uh, signal is sent back to uh, preceding uh, block sections, and indeed also the, how the distant signal is coded back as well. So I'll have a go at doing some of that. I did explain how the interlocker works. So some of this works with the interlocker uh, and some of this works independently uh, across the blocks. Maybe I'll explain some of how the block sections uh, communicate with each other for the distant and the line blocked ahead uh, control, uh, sort of with the interlocker, but almost simplistically without the interlocker uh, across three adjacent blocks as well. I might do some diagrams with that. <laughs> just pulling out all these cable bundles to fathom out which bundle is which. Oh, they are labelled actually, so it's not too hard to work out. I uh, just pulled this module out uh, and realised that it's not uh, fully wired up with the little tail uh, of, of linking cables, so I've got those to add as well. Oh, never mind, take a few minutes. Well, I've started. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a complete kind of myriad of cables and bundles and bits, isn't it? Uh, it's really hard to kind of explain. There is a real logic approach to each of these four blocks with the wiring behind. I've had to maintain a really logical approach, otherwise I would get confused. Uh, let's have a go at explaining some of it. Each of the modules has sort of a, a linking uh, bundle that I wrap up with this uh, coil thing. Some of the wires go directly straight up to the uh, mimic panel, and those are the indicator lights, because they don't go anywhere else. The indicator lights uh, represent where the train positions are. So those five bundles, those five individual white wires come, <laughs> here we go, out of the back of the module that send a signal for each of the indicator lights, uh, round and down and up, and they come out in this uh, bundle up the top here and connect to each, via these white wires, each of the little groups of uh, indicator lights. So the set that I'm looking at this time are these five here, one, two, three, four, and a shared one, five. So they're kind of easy to put in to start off with. I've also got, coming up from the, uh, the panel here, uh, the yellow, red, and green wires, uh, the power is, is separate. Uh, so I've got to separate them, but they go from the uh, mimic panel up here, down through the little bundle, but not directly to the module. They connect back to the uh, connector strip and a set of them go back to the module, as well as connecting up to the bundle that goes out track side to the uh, signals along the track. Get in there, it's confusing. Get in there though.
that's the first set of five cables done. Happy with that. Next little set are going to be the uh, red, yellow and green wires that link from the module to the uh, connection terminal strip. Well, that's the uh, green, yellow and red, another little set. Just, just get them in there just as a, a little holding thing. They will go all the way down, all the way down, round the back. If I can get you down there, yeah. Following that path, and then we'll connect into the connection strip. The next set is going to be the five train position detector uh, signal cables. Uh, just cut a uh, little set off. I'll connect them in here, work them through, and they'll connect back to the uh, junction strip as well. They can be tricky to get in sometimes. And some go straight in. There we are. So that's that set. Coil them round the suite. Well, that's that said done. I'm really happy with the progress so far. I've got another hour or so, so I'm going to crack on. I said at the beginning that it would be perhaps useful if I uh, explained how the blocks communicate with each other regarding the line blocked ahead for uh, not releasing a signal to go green at all, or even the distant sort of line blocked ahead, the section ahead plus one, and how that cascades back. So if I just dive into some diagrams and explain some of that to you, uh, while I crack on with uh, finishing off a little bit more here, I've got an hour or so before I need to go in to eat. Uh, so let me, let me crack on with a little bit more here, and I'll uh, explain the other bits by diagram. Here we go then with some more diagrams. You may have heard me explain something about the DLC or Decentralised Logic Control System before that I've devised for the Linley's Garden Railway. Let's dive into it now and see how modules for each block section link to ensure that section signals and distance signals are regulated. We have a long line of track. This track could be a long continuous loop, but it's easier to see it as a long straight piece of track with the right end as the start and trains travelling towards the left. We'll chop this track up into block sections. Each block section has a control module. Every module links with adjacent modules, communicating and permitting movements of trains according to automatic regulation and any manual inputs from the mimic panel. This is just a single line of track for one way working with no junctions, keeping it simple this time. Beginning with all the sections of track clear of trains and all the signals being pulled off, cleared, at the mimic panel, the signals will be green. As a train moves from the furthest right block, let's call that X01, towards the next section, train position sensors will detect the train position and associate modules will monitor and manage the progress of the train. As the train enters X02, this is detected by X02 block controller, and so X02 becomes an occupied block. 
Each controller module continuously receives messages from the block module ahead, as well as sending messages back to the block section module to the rear. To protect the train, XO2 module sends back to XO1 a line blocked message. XO1 understands this message and turns XO1 signal to red and stops any following trains from proceeding until the line ahead is clear. The train passes through XO2 and then into XO3. XO3 similarly detects the arrival of the train in the section and informs XO2 of this. XO2 then turns red. Then, and this is the cascade bit of messages to sections in the rear, XO2 knows that the section ahead of it is occupied by a train, but it also knows that its own section is clear. It then sends a distant message back to XO1. XO1 receives this updated message and turns its signal from red to yellow. This represents the line is clear ahead up to the next red signal, one clear block ahead. As the train moves from XO3 into XO4, the various block section modules will detect this and the signals will update, moving the red and yellow signal aspects along, following the progress of the train. The block sections to the rear of the block behind the train will then be cleared and the signals will be green. Any train which is following will be managed fully automatically to respond to the signal aspects. Trains will stop at red signals and will continue through blocks at caution at slightly reduced speed. At any time a signal can be turned on at a mimic panel and this overrides the automatic clearing of signals when trains pass on. Signals still show correctly with red and yellow aspects to protect a train in section. I hope all that makes sense. Let's get back outside and see how the wiring up of the module is progressing. Yeah, pleased with that. I've done really well this afternoon. Uh, I've been scrabbling around here for a good couple of hours uh, working on the electronics. Yeah, not quite finished. Uh, I've done most of it. I've done the signal connections, uh, done some of the system stuff. Uh, position sensor, uh, position indicators, uh, the track sensors, the cables are here, but not yet uh, completely coupled up. Can't do any more now. I've also uh, swapped the order of the uh, modules around. So uh, the one that I've been working on is now this one, whereas it was sort of on the right. So the sequence is uh, uh, Woodgate Crescent uh, 1, which is this one, on arrival, splits into 2, which is the station, uh, WC2 station. This is WC2 loop line, which is the one I've been working on, WC03, which is the uh, departure route. Well, I've been scrabbling around here for a couple of hours. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this update. So, from the Linley's Garden Railway, thanks for watching and bye for now.